I'm gonna teach you exactly how I edit cool basketball highlight videos. Hey, what's going on? My name is Peter Sorellis. I am a videographer and editor from Toronto, Canada. I specialize in sports, events, and commercial work. And this video is part two of a two-part series going over exactly how I edit basketball highlight B-roll videos. If you haven't seen part one yet, go watch part one right here, here. Otherwise, this video probably isn't gonna make a lot of sense. We're getting into a lot of color grading and some RGB glitch effects in this video, whereas the last video we set the project up and I kind of contextualized everything that I'm gonna be talking about right now. So go watch that, but if you're here from part one, then welcome, and without further ado, let's get into the content. We're back at it, we're in Premiere Pro, and I'm gonna show you guys how I finished coloring and adding effects to this video. So when you first bring your video back into Premiere Pro from After Effects, more than likely, you're gonna have a composition for when you did the assembly edit. So you're gonna to wanna to take that video that you had and you're going to want to bring it in and lay it over top of the one that you already had. So say we go back to project 1.1, which is the first one we were working on, where we have this little assembly edit. You would take your video that is fully finished. You'd bring in just the video, not the audio aspect, and you'd lay it over top like this. Now you can see exactly where the cuts in your initial video were. So you can go through and cut your video up the exact same way, right on those cuts just like this and this is a pretty fast process now because like you can see where all your cuts are also a pretty short video and then at that point as long as you've been making a new project every single time that you make a change to the video so that you have a log of old projects and you can go back to any version you want you can basically just delete this or at the very least you can start flattening it out by just taking this stuff dragging it all down and moving it onto less video layers. Obviously, if you have any like masking effects, you don't wanna like ruin those, but you know your edit better than anyone else, so just be conscious of that and make it as flat as possible so that your video takes up as few layers as possible from the old versions without ruining anything. And then on the very top, you can have like the new version. So anyways, we're gonna assume that you've now done that, you cut your whole video up and you have the new version from After Effects in here. What you wanna do at this point is start coloring. I showed you that for this video, I had footage from myself. I also had footage from a second shooter and I was shooting on a Sony a7 III, which is also the camera I'm shooting on right now. That is a full frame mirrorless camera. Oh my God. Okay. So I was shooting on the Sony a7 III. That is a full frame mirrorless camera. I need to close this window. So as I was saying, I was shooting for this video on the Sony a7 III, which is a full frame mirrorless camera from Sony. My second shooter was shooting on a Sony A6500, which is an APS-C mirrorless camera from Sony. So he doesn't have all the picture profile settings that I had. Also, I was on the Tamron 2875 f2.8 and he was shooting on the Sony 18 to 105 f4. So he had a tighter aperture than I did, which means that our images look a little different. So I needed color correct before I started doing any creative color correction to make his footage and my footage look the same because I used footage from both of our cameras. And if there's inconsistency between the color in the footage, it's gonna look a little bit weird. For an example of how you would color correct two pieces of footage from different cameras to look the same, I'm going to go back to our footage call layer. We're gonna grab a little piece of purple footage, which is my second shooter's camera, and we're gonna grab a little piece of blue footage, which is my camera. You wanna hit this little button here, this is the comparison view, so that you can see two different clips at the same time. If you don't see it down here in this bar, you click the little plus button right here, and then you can find comparison view right there and you would just click it and drag it onto your timeline there. And so you click comparison view and you basically get, you get this clip right here, which is mine. And then you get another clip over here, which you determine by the number of frames or the time code. Here the time code is in frames, it's 88941. So let's just go here and write 88941. If your time code is in seconds and minutes, you would just write the seconds and minutes to get to that exact frame. And there is my frame. So now, if you wanna match this footage to be the same as this one, because I kinda of like the color in this one more, we're gonna to come to this footage here. Well, actually, we should bump this over then. We're going to go to Lumetri Color. Well, we have this clip selected, and we're gonna bump this over to show that clip. And we're going to go to Color Wheels and click Apply Match. Click Apply Match, and it tries its best to make this footage into this one. It didn't do the best job, but it wasn't bad. So you can see before, it looked like this, after, it looked like that. Personally, I think it's too blue for my liking, but we're gonna fix that. So now we have like this kind of base and they've started to make the two clips look kinda similar. Not really, but like we're getting there. So now we can start playing with the color temperature 
and that makes a big difference. Now these clips are starting to look a lot more similar. You can also see here that the white balance is kind of different in the two clips. So I'm actually going to white balance this clip. I think that this is the one that's a little bit off. I like the white balance in this other clip more. So I'm going to white balance these walls. Where So I took basically took this and I sampled the white balance from this clip to change the white balance in this one. I think there's a little bit too much contrast in this one. So I'm going to bring that down a little bit. The black seem a little bit too strong. So I'll bring that up. And let's do my old favorite trick, bring the vibrance up and the saturation down. When you're color grading, you should definitely take more time and kind of guesstimating right now. But very quickly, we went from the footage looking like this, and it's not really similar to what I had, to the footage looking like this. And it's a lot closer to the footage out of my camera. It's not perfect because I did this in like two minutes. But basically, you keep tweaking small parameters like that after using the apply match effect in this comparison view. And then you can get the two cameras that you use if you're using two cameras to look the same, assuming they don't already look the exact same. Now that we've got all our footage looking the same, we got all the stabilization and effects that we want in. Now we're going to actually get into the creative color grade. So I'm just going to come onto this adjustment layer and show you how I did everything. And I'll show you where to find all the effects because this thing is going to be a bit of a doozy to render and I already rendered it out. So I don't want there to be too much lag. The first thing that I did is I added this color emboss effect. So this color emboss effect here, and I'll disable all the effects for a second. This color emboss effect kind of gives it this little edgy look. It kind of creates like a small looking edge around all the players. So I personally like that to give my footage a bit of a more contrasty, gritty look. I use it very sparingly. You can need to use small amounts. You can see here the settings that I use. When you bring the relief too high, it starts to look just ridiculous like this. You definitely don't want to do that. But I use the color emboss effect for this video. It gave it a nice little look that kind of went with the whole RGB thing. Then I use the film effect. The film effect is an effect from Red Giant. You would go here and just search film and you come down to Red Giant Magic Bullet and click film. Red Giant is all paid stuff. I used some paid plugins, but you can easily achieve a film effect with Lumetri color. And I'm going to show you a couple of quick settings that you can play around with to kind of get that look. But anyways, I use the film effect from Red Giant. If you have it, you should use it. And these are the settings I use. My negative stop was Fuji Eterna 500T. I picked it up Fuji 1350. I just like the Fuji look. I think Fuji in general has nice colors. So this is kind of my cheap way of emulating it. And I turned the strength down because when this strength is at 100, it's like a little bit too strong for my liking. 70 was kind of a good place for me. And then I added a Lumetri color effect to just brighten the whole thing up. You can see my Lumetri color effect here. I brought faded film up, which is a good way to get a nice little faded film look e like very quickly and easily. It's not the best, but it does a job real quick. And Lumetri color. And then you can see I also lifted the highlights, brought the contrast up, brought the exposure up a little bit. And that makes a big difference in just the overall exposure in this clip. Now, if you want to get more of a faded film look using the Lumetri color effect, a real quick and easy way to do that is to just lift your blacks up a little. So you would make two points like that on your RGB curves under the curves panel and you just grab the one at the end now and you just lift it like this. And you can see that like when you do this, you kind of get all of the dark spots to kind of fade out like that. So this is before and this is after. You need to be careful to not go too crazy with this. If you bring it like way up here, like it just starts to look stupid honestly. But if you're like moderate with this, it can make a difference very quickly on giving you a little bit of a filmic look with no plugins and no paid anything. Now this disabled effect here adds grain. I chose not to do this, but if you want to add grain, there's an add noise effect in Premiere and there's an add noise effect in After Effects. Let's see if there's an add noise effect in Premiere. I never use it. Yeah, you can even search noise. Just grab this noise effect, drag it on, and then you can just like crank this and it adds a whole bunch of noise and you can decide how crazy you want to make this. Anyways, that's how I color this. I put it on an adjustment layer and then I spread that over top of the entire video. And that covers everything that I needed to cover because I made all the footage look the same by matching all the cameras and then adjusting the exposure in all my footage so it was decent. You notice that at the start of this video, there's like a 3D photo effect here that's kind of funky. And I didn't touch on this, or at least I wasn't planning on touching on this in this video. I was going to make a separate video on how to do like 3D photos. So if you want to see that, then drop a comment and let me know. So I'm not going to go into this except for like minor details. But basically, I took a single photo that I had. I brought it into Photoshop. I cut out the ball. I cut out the player. So I had like a ball layer, a player layer, and a background layer. Brought them into After Effects. And I started slowly animating small rotations. I used the puppet tool to slowly move his hand a tiny bit. I added some small rotation to the ball. And I used the clone stamp tool to fill in the background anywhere where there were gaps. 
that's the five second explanation as to how to make a 3D photo <laughs> really quickly, but we can get into more detail on that in every video. For the RGB glitch and chromatic aberration effects, so I decided that I wanted to do those effects after I already got to this stage, right? So you might be thinking, oh, well, the video is almost done. If I want to add more effects, I'm kind of stuck. Technically, you can add any effect you want. You can always go back to the start and go through the same process we just went through for one specific clip and add any effect. But if you get to this point and you want to add effects that are based on like overlays and they don't require you to, to get more footage, this require you to overlay and alter the footage you have, you can still do that at this stage. So what I would do, say I wanted to make this, give this clip some chromatic aberration. I would hit option, drag it up. I'd right click on the new version and I click replace with After Effects Composition. This brings me right into Adobe After Effects. So I'm going to go to an old clip from here and we're going to go through an example of how I would add this type of glitch effect. So let's copy and paste this over there so it doesn't mess anything up. And we're gonna option, drag up, right click, replace with After Effects Composition. So we're going to go over the RGB, the shine, and the chromatic aberration effects that I use. We're going to talk about the expressions and the keyframes that I used and my logic behind doing that. And then you'll be able to get some cool effects like this. So let's get to it. So I used the RGB separation effect from Red Giant. Again, I use a lot of Red Giant plugins here, but there are other ways to split your RGB channels. There's a million tutorials on YouTube about exactly how to create RGB effects that go into way more detail than I can possibly afford to go into into this video because it's already so long. But I use the RGB separation effect from Red Giant and basically it has this effect for radius and this effect for distortion. And you can see here that I used some expressions to kind of create these effects. And those expressions are linked to this slider. So I'm gonna show you how you can build something like this so you can have this slider controlling these type of effects. So let's go up to this here and I'm actually just gonna, on this one, delete all of these effects, except for the transform effect, because we might need that. So let's go insert RGB separation using FX console, which is a plugin for video copilot that we talked about before on this channel. So we're going into RGB separation and we have our radius and we have our distortion. And these are the things that are gonna kind of control how strong our RGB effect is. So if you turn radius up, you can see that they become very split if you turn distortion up, you can see that it becomes very warped like that. So what I did here is I linked both of these to a slider so that they would both change. So while you have this clip selected, you go into your effects and you search slider control. You can also go here and do any of the effects that I'm pulling in FX console. You would just go slider control and it comes up. Basically now we have this slider control and this slider control is a random slider that can take on any numerical value and can be linked to any effect. It has no effect on anything until you link it to something else, but it allows you to remotely control multiple things at once. So we want our radius and our distortion to be controlled in sync. We're gonna grab the pick whip here next to radius and we're gonna drag it to our slider control. And then we're gonna take the pick whip next to distortion and drag it to slider. And now, as we change the slider, the radius and the distortion are both changing. So we can use this one slider now to control two different effects and really mess up the RGB glitch. So as we're going through, I want this RGB effect to take place at areas that are more intense. If a shot goes in or there's a dunk, I want there to be a harder RGB glitch than if the player is just dribbling there doing whatever. At this moment, right here where there's like the speed ramp, let's make our RGB glitch kind of big. We can start it at like two, maybe a little more than that. We'll start our RGB glitch looking like that. And we'll hit this stopwatch here so that we can toggle the keyframes to begin animating. And as we come here to where the speed ramp is gonna happen, we're gonna make this stronger. So we'll have a stronger RGB glitch here. Something, that's a little heavy, maybe something like that. And then as we go forward a bit, we're gonna copy and paste this keyframe, Command C, Command V, and bring it back down. So now as you go through, it looks something like that. And that's not bad, maybe this can be stronger even. So now we have something like that, and that's fine but let's make this a little bit more random and chaotic so what we can do to make this more random i guess is if you come to the radius tab here and you can do this for distortion too if you want here we're going to start using a very simple expression probably the most useful expression in after effects the wiggle expression so after here where we have this slider control expression if you click a dot that tells after effects that you want to start writing a new line of script or a new expression so then we write wiggle and the wiggle expression basically tells After Effects to make the parameter of this effect, the radius, equal this number, the slider, because we've used the slider expression, 
between a certain value and another value. And it should change between those values at a random frequency that we determine. So this is gonna make more sense when we do it. But let's just say we want this effect to wiggle at a frequency of 10, which is moderately fast. And we want it to have a wiggle range of five. So because this is set to 13 right now, that means that the radius expression at a speed of 10 is gonna wiggle between eight, which is five less than 13, and 18, which is five more than 13. So it'll randomly change between those values and then our radius is gonna randomly flicker to create a larger or less large RGB effect as the clip plays on. But as the slider effect increases, the range increases as well. So when we get to here and the slider's at 42, then that range of five changes from being eight and 18 to being 37 and 47. So we're still gonna have a larger RGB effect and then a smaller RGB effect, but by adding the wiggle effect, we're introducing randomness to the effect. And that's gonna make this effect look more dynamic. So if we play it back again, you can see there's kind of a little bit of a subtle flicker. Maybe we can even make that stronger. Let's make it faster and let's make it harder. Just so, we can, just so we can really stand out. And now you can see there's a little bit of a wiggle in that effect. That RGB effect is starting to wiggle a little harder. And basically I'm just going through and using this RGB effect. And as I get to any key moments, like here when this basket goes in, that's a key moment for sure. And this whole fast cutting sequence right here, that's pretty quick and we kind of want that to be stronger. So let's tone down the RGB effect prior to that. And then when we get to this moment here, let's make it real intense. And when the ball goes in, then we can have it kind of like max out and then we can have it come down again. So that looks something like this. For this effect here, we have like a really hard RGB distortion, but it's creating this really big turquoise bar on the side as a result of our RGB effect. And we don't really want that there. So I've been using the scale effect to just like bring this bigger and get rid of that. So let's say we go to where our RGB glitch effect starts, we'll add a keyframe for scale. And now here you can see that the turquoise bar is pretty big, so we'll just scale it up a little. So that goes away, maybe to like 110. And if we can ride through this now, and we see it doesn't really appear that much. Here it kind of starts kicking in again. So let's add another keyframe using option S to add this same value. And then we'll go to where it kind of kicks in and it gets a little bigger, and we'll bring that up to 112. And it still peaks in a little bit right there, so let's just bring this even higher and now we can kind of scale this back down if we want to what it was before around like 105 104 but that's basically how you deal with that edge thing just scale it up get rid of it simplest way to do it so on that note the next effect that we are going into is the chromatic aberration i also grabbed this effect from red giant and as you can see here all i'm really doing is i am adding the effect opacity besides that i'm using the defaults for this effect I dragged like this stuff up a little bit, but we'll get into it. So let's go back to the clip that we're working on right now. And we're gonna search for chromatic aberration. Unique chromatic aberration from Red Giant. So I'm just basically using the default settings for this chromatic aberration effect. And all I'm doing is I'm tweaking the effect opacity. So if you come down here, compositing options, effect opacity, and I'm literally just having a flicker again with a wiggle effect. So we can bring this opacity down so instead of having like a huge aberration like this, we can bring it down, not necessarily to zero, maybe like to 30 and option click on the stopwatch. And then we have this here, we can go wiggle and let's make this animate at a speed of 15 actually. And we'll make the range 10. So now we can play this back and we have like this chromatic aberration effect that kind of glitches and jitters throughout. If I play it back without the chromatic aberration effect enabled, then you can automatically see right away the distortion goes away and we just have this RGB. But then you enable the chromatic aberration effect and you start to get like this glitching around the edge of the frame. It kind of pops in and out. It's kind of a cool effect to add. So I went and did that. The same way that we connected the RGB radius to a slider, we can also connect this to a slider. So let's add another slider control to this. Actually, we didn't call the old one a name. So let's just click enter and that'll allow us to give this a name. We're gonna call the slider control for the RGB effect, RGB slider. And then we're going to add another slider control to this like that and we're going to right click enter to give it a name and we're going to call this aberration slider and we're going to take this compositing options thing and we're going to bring aberration slider down you take the pick whip you drag it to slider 
and now you can see that this is linked to the value of this slider. Again, we're going to retype in our wiggle effect. We'll go wiggle 15, it was, and 10. And we're going to set this to 30. And like the same technique we did before, we'll go through and at points of emphasis, we're going to make this stronger. So let's set it to like 46 here. Let's go back to a point where it's not that big of a deal. We'll set it to like 20. Here's a little speed ramp thing we talked about before. So we'll keep it at 46. We get through that and we bring it back down to 20. So you go through and we're gonna have this chromatic aberration effect get larger from this point to here. It's gonna be consistently large to here and then it's gonna get smaller again. And the entire time it's gonna be wiggling at a speed of 15 with a range of 10 on either side of the value of the slider. And that's what that looks like with the chromatic aberration added. Now the final effect that I added is the shine effect. So we're going to come back to the clip we're working on here. We're going to add the shine effect because that was the last effect I used. And that's how I kind of got the glow to happen on a player. And when he does the drive here, you get that little glowing shiny effect coming off of him. So the parameters I adjusted for this shine effect. First, I turned the ray length way down. I want to make that shorter. And the boost light thing can come up a little tiny bit. Now we're going to go to colorize and we're going to change the colors from red to be something that kind of matches this scene. So we get this little thing once you hit, once you click on shadows and I'm going to make this into like a light blue. It kind of matches the background here. So we're going to make that blue. We'll make the midtones something similar, but a little brighter. And the highlights can basically be like a near white. That's fine. And we'll change the blending mode to add. Maybe we'll leave it at screen. Actually, yeah, let's leave the blending mode at screen. That's kind of cool. And then I went under to the fractal noise and I made that enable. And that creates this kind of like fog effect, which I think is really cool. And we're going to go into the compositing options. We'll bring that a little bit lower because I think this effect is like pretty strong right now. But essentially, when the rays come out of the player during a central moment, all I'm doing is keyframing this ray length to get longer and shorter, like that. So let's say we want him at this moment here to get that ray effect. So we're going to make the ray length 1.6 here. We'll go to where we want this to end, which is like around there, and we'll keyframe it at 1.6. Then we're going to go a few frames over. We'll bring this down to like... Well, we can bring it down to zero, basically. This effect is kind of extra, so it doesn't need to be on the whole video. We can just use it for key points of emphasis where we think it's cool. And now, when you look at this, after all the parameters we changed, it looks something like this. And you can see right here, we have that like shiny effect on it. So that's how I built that. And if you take the shine effect off, then that's all gone. But you add the shine effect, and it looks like light is emitting out of this person just as a result of this very simple thing. Now, once you finish this and you've added these type of effects to every single clip that you want, then you basically do the same process for exporting out of After Effects that we did before, where you go File, Export, Export to Media Encoder or Add to Render Queue. You can go Add to Render Queue like this, and you're just exporting straight out of here like this. Export a full res version, the same process that I showed you before. Bring it back into Premiere do any final tweaks and adjustments that you want if you have like a watermark like i did that you want to lay over top just take that watermark image and drag it across the top of your video at the end and then you just export an h264 out of premiere and then you're done so i'll go over how to export an h264 just because we've done all this work we should at least show that so once you have your project back in premiere you go file export or command m media and then you go format h264 Preset, match source, high bitrate, then you click use maximum render quality, render at maximum depth. A problem that I have a lot is that when I'm exporting out of Premiere, I find that my colors after I export don't look the exact same as my colors in Premiere after I've colored it. So there's this gamma compensation LUT that I found in the Adobe forums that actually fixes this problem. So I usually click LUTs, I click applied, select, and then I got this UT gamma compensation let's save right here. I click on that and click open. That doesn't like make a change on the actual video except for making it moderately darker. But when you export, this helps make the colors on your exported video in the H.264 format look the same as they looked in Premiere Pro. All right, so that is exactly how I edit basketball highlight workout videos. That is the full rationale, all the effects, the thought process that I'm thinking about when I'm editing these videos. I know this is a really long one, but I really hope it was helpful because my goal with these videos 
is to give you guys the insights and the help that you need to go and make some awesome content like this as well. So if you found this video helpful, then please make sure to subscribe because I'm releasing videos for content creators and videographers on a regular basis. And I'd love to have you around for that so that we can learn together. And if you have any further questions about this, because I know it was really lengthy and I probably forgot some stuff, drop a comment below. I will be really active down there trying to get back to you all and fix any problems that you have. Or you can also hit me up in my DMs at PCRellis on Instagram. I would love to hear from you there. If you have anything like really specific, we can get into that. But for the most part, just drop a comment. That'd be cool. And that's going to be it for now. I have nothing else to say. So until next time, peace out.